Back at Radio 247, you're live in a minute. I'm your host, Twism White Beast, and today we're bringing you a rare interview with none other than a legendary music. <laughs> this man has been around the world. He's seen everything from front to back, and he can play a mean saxophone. <laughs> so let me introduce you to a musician, technologist, entrepreneur, professor, and CEO of Think Experience, Scotty Page. Mr. Page, how you doing today, brother? <laughs> yeah, for, applause, thank right? you yeah, exactly. for that wonderful intro, man. I feel like, whew, I hope I can live up to Yeah, now. right? <laughs> you better deliver now. You better deliver, right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> How you doing, brother? How you I'm doing? doing great, thank you. Very, very good, thanks. Good. That's good, that's good. So, uh, I, you know, that is that is a lot to say right there. When when you, Now, do you introduce yourself like that? Or what do you say when, when you're introducing yourself? I'm just Scotty Page, or? Well, you know... It kind of depends on the setting. You know, I've been a sort of a serial entrepreneur. When I'm a business guy, it's one thing. When I'm an artist, it's kind of another. But yeah, you know, Scott Page, that's kind of the usual uh, thing. Uh, my my handle is I am Scott Page. So everything is I am Scott Page. So I guess I'm Scott Page today. Right? <laughs> that works for us as long as we got the right one, right? Yeah, no, no fakes to imitation. <laughs> All right. So uh, it, it says, uh, I was reading a wikipedia and some other things that you are the son of bill page who was in the lawrence welk band and was also a fixture on the johnny carson show well actually uh my dad well he my dad had done the D johnny carson show a few times but he he was on the lawrence welk show for 15 years from the er early okay. days when early you know television started out and so i grew up around the tv space as a kid you know so, which is pretty interesting because you know there was only what was it seven channels back in the day you know it was you know mm -hmm. two four five seven <laughs> eleven and thirteen obvious, <laughs> and you had to get up and turn it unless you were lucky and had one of those little remotes that you know came later yeah. on you could actually <laughs> change your channel from sitting back in the lounge chair uh yeah but i grew up on the television you know in the television space and um you know my father was not only a uh, an incredible musician you know he not only did lawrence welk years he was nbc staff he worked at the you know the, all the 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 uh, dorothy chandler pavilion and all those places where the you know for the light opera season stuff so he was a real right. seasoned musician but he was also a serial entrepreneur so uh that's kind of where i got into the business side of it you know when i was a kid we had boat businesses lighting businesses we had owned 26 donut shops at one time uh, we had uh uh, my dad had a reed business, and he was also one of the, the the guys that designed and developed, actually started and built the wah wah pedal, which is the oh, famous wow. guitar pedal. So yeah, yeah, yeah I remember yeah. I remember when my dad brought that home from work the first time, and uh, played it for me. And it's actually very interesting because you know it was originally called the uh, Clyde McCoy wah wah pedal, and Clyde McCoy was a trumpet player that used a mute that had a whoop. Womp, 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 womp. Mm -hmm. You know, the trumpet guys mm -hmm. would do that. Yeah, yeah, now, my dad yeah. went into Brad when he was working at the Thomas Organ Company when they were developing all the amplified instruments. So he said, boy, it'd be great if I could have my 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 uh, my instruments sound like womp, womp, womp. Could we do that? So the guy developed yeah, that yeah. thing, brought it home. And that next day, my dad played it for me with his clarinet. It was like, wow, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Right. Yeah. And then uh, and then he did the very first recording of that. Uh, the Wawa pedal, which was called the Wawa doozy. And for those that don't know, it was actually recorded. The very first recording of the Wawa was on a uh, bassoon. So it was actually done with a bassoon. And I actually just found an entire crate of those freaking records. So I have that original first 45 with that from back in the day. It's pretty fun. So, so, yeah. so for those so for those of us who are are not as musical instrument knowledge, what is the difference between a bassoon and you said a clarinet? Is that what I yeah, what I heard? The, yeah, the bassoon is that long, you know, uh, it's like a red, looks like a red post. They used to call it the farting. Oh, okay, right? okay, it I know what you're talking. Okay, it has the little vocal that comes out. So, you know, you've heard that. Yep, it's really yep, more of yep. a classical instrument. So it was very interesting okay. to see that that was, you know, the first recording, and also that was first that was recorded in the studio Sound City. Do you remember Sound City? No, okay, you're, not a, you're not a music guy. Are you a music guy? I wasn't sure. I, I am, but I'm, I'm a different genre. So my mine is just hip hop history. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Sound City was, you know, considered one of the, you know, great recording studios like Abbey Road and, you know, the record okay, from New York okay. and Sound wow. City. So 
you know, Nirvana cut all, you know, cut their hit records, Fleetwood Mac, on and on and on and on. Gotcha. So it was, it was cut in that studio. Well, that was the original studio it was my dad's studio. Dave Grohl has a, he bought the recording console out of that and did a documentary. So you can go go check out Sound City, the documentary. It's out there. Was I, a, I definitely you can that. learn about the uh, thing, except it was wrong. It wasn't a uh, in the movie. They were wrong because they talked about that. The studio being a warehouse before it became Sound City and actually it wasn't. It was the Vox Sound Lab, which okay. was uh, actually where they started the studio. And because I was there the day that my dad and I walked in that room and it was four walls before we built the studio. So but anyway, a little a little hint for those, uh, a little tip. No, I don't know, a little uh, a trivia for those, you know, yeah. following that around. Oh, I love it. I love it. And see, but that, that's that's what makes it so interesting. That's music history. So interesting is you can think that, you know, it. And there'll be somebody who has the lightest little different story that makes the world of difference. Oh, yeah. And it's just whether or not you actually listen, right? So, uh, so you know, we're sitting here and we're talking about, um, you know, the different experiences like being into a studio before it's done and, and the TV stuff and, and things like that. Was any of this um, overwhelming for you or were you just, were you ready for it? You just soaked it right up. You mean when I was a kid? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Explain the question. You mean say that again? So when you were a kid and as you were growing up, and like you said, your dad was was a, a part of these shows and and was at NBC and and, and other things, and was also a, like you said, a serial entrepreneur with the uh, 25 donut shops. Was at any time was any of this overwhelming for you, or did you just be able to jump right in and soak it all up and run right with it? You know, I, you know, when you're a kid, you just kind of, it was just what we did. You know, that's what mm -hmm. dad did. You get up and dad yeah. was working and, you know, I got to work a lot with him on his kid. But I mean, he really gave me the the drive to be a business person. You know, I'm on my fourth company right now. And, right. Um, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And, you know, I think, you know, there's no question my dad was a massive influence on me. I mean, first of all, he was the, he was the greatest guy. I mean, he was the best. I mean, I yeah. won the lottery when it came to parents. I had incredible parents. I'm so thankful. That's awesome. I, That's I can't awesome. tell you how thankful I am for that. But yeah, it was mostly, um, you know, just being around him. He took me everywhere when I was a kid. And, you know, I was actually when I when we had the donut shops in junior high, I became a master donut maker. And he would sometimes wake me up at 4 a.m. and said, I got a call from the donut shop in, you know, D Belmont Shores. And the, the cook didn't show up and the catering guys, can you cook? So I was such a good donut guy when I was so he would drive me there and oh, yeah. I'd cook and get all the donuts together and then run to school the next morning. So, that's you know, I think great. I just taught me all of that. And one thing about my dad, he was always on time. Now, that's one thing I never really learned for my dad so <laughs> i could be a lot better about that one uh, couldn't we all though I, I i find that even even i as, as dedicated as i try to be it just sometimes i can't get yeah. done right you know yeah. so all right so you know you've grown up in such a i want to say not only musically a variety but you know with like you said donut shops and and, and tv shows and different things where did you fit the time to be in it? Did, did you, was your child, did you ever take a moment to just go play or? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, okay, I mean, okay. So, so you weren't like just totally immersed in this. You, you had a fair balance. Oh yeah, big time. You know, my, first of all, my dad was also, you know, he was a sport nut. You know, he played golf up, you know, like six, seven days a week up until he gotcha. passed. You know, and we grew up, we played tennis, we water skied, we snow skied, we built a surfboard together. So I was, I was pretty active. And, in, you know, back in those days in the neighborhood, it was all the kids, you know, it was like, yeah, it's yeah. so different now, which is so interesting. I mean, my, I mean, it was so funny. I remember, uh, you know, when we were kids, you'd get up, you might be 10 or 11 years old. You say, you get up and you say, see you, mom. And you'd be gone. And just as long as you were back before dinner. You know, yeah. everything was cool. And they had no idea where you were or what you did. And, you know, the kids were all like posses and we just would run around and, you know, do whatever we did. So, no, I I mean, I had an incredible, kid, uh, you know, childhood. I, again, I'm like probably one of the most thankful people you'll ever meet for that. And it sounds like it sounds like you you come from that time where everything was still what seemed innocent. I mean, you know, you, you talk about how the world changed so much. And I think one of the things that we've lost along the way is the innocence. The ability to all our children to be able to go outside and not worry about something happening. You, you, um, are you, are you one of those a fan of what the world used to be, or are you 
you know, hopeful for them to become something better. Well, you know, I, I, I... I don't think it. I, I don't think there's anything to get better. It just it is. It just is. Yeah. It happens. It just happens as it happens. Um, right. You know, there's certain things that I've seen go away that I think are 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 a little bit sad. I mean, we're we're now so glued to the machine. I I believe personally that we are merging with machines now, which I think mm-hmm. is not not just my thinking, but a lot of people. I mean, you're seeing uh, being a technologist and kind of seeing where we've come. From because yeah. I mean I remember the days when there were no cell phones it was just a phone booth and yeah. you know and if you had to make a call you had to run around and try to find a phone booth when you were out and it was well, the change the change in the couch just to make the phone call right? oh exactly I mean, so, yeah. so you know it, so those days were a lot different and now we're all completely glued to this machine it's almost like yeah. it is stuck in your arm I mean we're connected and you know we're seeing you know chips they're experimenting putting chips in people I don't know if you saw NeuroNet the thing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Elon Musk is doing now. They've been able the to tap RFI into beat chips and everything. And RFI, so it's, yep. You know, it's a very interesting time. And, you know, people always talk about, uh, you know, remember this whole thing about AI and, oh, it'll never replace humans and it'll never be a smart. Um, and that we're is almost there. You know, we, we are, we're almost there. I mean, when you think yeah. about it, it's basically taking the entire database of human thinking and ideas is being put into hard drives now and, and formulating it specifically for that individual right and i just read an article by a comp- by an ai that's been now writing articles it writes right. articles by itself so it, it creates it, it builds the information now for it and it creates a complete article and you read it and you go is that a human or is that a machine so i, I was just getting ready to say what's what's the what's the differential line right there because yeah uh, did you ever see the movie? Did you ever see the movie uh, AI Robot with uh, Will Smith and everything? You know, I didn't see that one, but you know, I'm pretty familiar with the concepts for sure. And it's so. I was just going to say the concept behind that is is the similar thinking where we have now merged so much with the machine that we might as well just have the machine do for us. You're a technologist. Are you yeah. not a progressive? Are you are you not for that kind of idea of thinking? Well, you know. It's 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 interesting, you know. I'm uh, I took a pretty heavy spiritual path about you know 15 years ago. I mean, okay. My favorite subject is consciousness. That's why I say I think oh, man, I, love it. Oh, I think I man love and machine consciousness. are merging, are merging yes. in the sense that uh, we now have you know original computing was binary, on or off, yes, yes or no. Right. We're now got quantum computing, which is yes, no, and now it's adding maybe. And yeah. if you think about it, at the quantum level, we're just vibrations. We're just notes. We're just energy, right? Energy. energy and everything's exactly. energy. This table's energy. My cup mm-hmm. of cup here, the coffee. So is I think that what's happening is consciousness is just changing its form, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. so sure humans are going to be here in 100 years, to be honest. I think I, I the insanity of the egoic mind... And, you know, I always hear people say, oh, save the world. Well, we got to save the world. I'm saying save the world. Save what? ourselves. I say save ourselves. What? That's what they're really doing. That's what yeah, they're because really Because the world's fine. It's going to keep yeah. spinning like for another four, been billions and billions of years. Got it's really it. whether man will be, uh, be here and whether man is even needed. If you think about it, we've now gotten to the point where, yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, if a bee, if bees go out of existence, we're in trouble. The planet's we're in done. trouble. Exactly. We're done. Exactly. But if man goes away, this place flourishes like when crazy. Right. Exactly. And now right. when you're seeing machines at a point where, you know, they can self-replicate themselves now, they have, you know, built-in 3D printers so they can replace their own parts. I just read an article about the first robots reproducing themselves, which is wow. really interesting. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. So there's a lot wow. of very interesting things going on. So I just think consciousness is basically changing form. Man is, you know, will man be like the dinosaurs and will the machines be the new okay. conscious? I mean, you know, so, it's like, it's like so crazy. I, I know I'm going to spark a lot of debate among the listeners and, and maybe even yourself a little bit, but it, it sounds like you share a lot of the same ideas. Now, if you look at humans, and I'm going to start from the human point of view, if you look at humans as such with every other organism, mole or apex predator, they have their moment. And then they collapse, as with any civilization. If you look at the Romans, you look at the Aztecs, you look at at the Mongols, they have their pinnacle. It lasts for a long time, and then they drop. So that if you if you follow along with how the world works and how how the energy of the of the universe goes, yes, patterns exactly patterns. You start to see things, and so now 
I, I read once a long time ago that 2012, you remember 2012, how it's supposed to be the end of the world and all this is supposed to go wrong. I read somewhere along the line that 2012 was the end of singular consciousness and the creation of universal consciousness in which the Mayans believed that the world that was the one conscious would die and that the starting of the next world, which was universal consciousness, would begin. And if you kind of take a step back and you're of an educated mind, you see that that's almost the case here. It almost seems as if since about the 2010, 2012 era, we have really started to mind meld with the world around us. And I don't mean just, you know, the technological aspect. I mean, being able to interact and communicate with people on the other side of the world and influencing their daily decisions, influencing their lifestyle choices. That's what we call universal consciousness where everything starts to become similar and one, right? Yeah. I, I really I really believe that, like you said, I don't believe humans are going to be here for long. I fact, think that the next step of, and I don't want to say evolution, because evolution should seem like it's right. a preordained thing. I, I want to say choice. It's, a, it's man's choice to evolve themselves into a machine, because we think that a machine can be better than what we are. And by doing so, we're going to lose what makes us human, what makes us unique. And so I agree with you. Your gears, gone. Well, you done. know, it's, it's interesting what you're saying. You know, again, you know, the Romans and stuff. I kind of feel like that's we're, we're going through that same phase in the sense that the great myths are being taken down right now. What I mean by that is exactly. the great religions and all of that, the things that bind societies together, groups yep. together. Now, there's such an attack on on religions and, you know, it's getting so free form and anything goes. And I don't mean to be, you know, I don't want to be sound like a prude, but you know, when you're starting you're to not. see, you're starting to see songs like WAP becoming mainstream yeah. and you're seeing presidents of the United States up and coming, having conversations with that type of stuff. I mean, what I think is happening is the moralist morals and things of the, of the myths are all they're they're going away. And that's why it's feeling very, it's feeling very Roman-esque where it's like <laughs> everything can go, you know, and, and it's the insanity of really what's the, the biggest issue we have is the human condition, right? That's the problem. That's the issue. It's not the style. So, you know, I mean, people talk, talk about, you know, capitalism, socialism, whatever. The problem that mixes all those together is the human element. Because exactly. in the pure forms, when you say, do you think socialism, you go, wow, that sounds so great. Everybody taking care of themselves and doing something. It sounds, dude, utopia. Love it. I mean, that's the way it should be, right? But the problem right. is, is you put a human in there and you've got greed and all this insanity. Great biasness, uh, division. Division. Yep. And that's why, from the point of view of, of a socialist thing, I, I'm I'm a free market capitalist. I'm just gonna, I'm telling okay. you, I believe in conscious capitalism because I think we need to get that. And the reason is, to me, that's more like nature or consciousness because it it just happens. It's freedom, right? To just do what's going to happen. It's not always going to be good. Sometimes it's going to be horrible. Sometimes it's going to be great. But it kind of lives in it. It allows for innovation and free thinking. When you start getting into a socialist type of uh, uh, style, what happens is it's less people making decisions for you, right? It's like, we're going to make a decision on what you're going to get your health care. I mean, we're going to make decisions for you on how you should be doing things. But then I and ask, call it and call it best for the public, best, best for, for the best for everybody. But then I go, well, who is making who are the humans that are going to go make that decision? Because I see humans not making some good decisions. And so yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm more about <laughs> I'm a freedom. I want free, you know, free. I don't want free. I think it's bad for the soul of the human people to put them in a box like that and say, here's what's good for you. I just don't, yeah. I don't buy it. I just think there's too much greed and insanity of the humans that control this stuff. And so I think we got to be careful for what we wish for. Uh, the utopian world sounds great. And yeah. listen, if, I would high five if we could go do that. But the problem exactly. is we got humans, right? And so that's what we have to be careful from my so point of view. I was I, I'm I'm really big into theology versus reality. Um and and if you look at generations, um 
one God is always replaced by the next. Mm -hmm. And you see similarities in end of world stories that you see, you see similarities in, you know, stories that they have amongst themselves. But the one thing that has always been shared by everybody is the ability to be unique. Everybody has always been, each religion has been unique, each culture has been unique, each walk of life has been unique. And as we progress forward, <laughs> you, you talk about socialisms and, and, and capitalisms, and, and I really kind of think now that, you know, if more people were to understand the core fundament, fundamental ideas of each of these things, a lot more people would be in a green field um, because any grown person or any person that has sense about them that can look around, like you said, wow, and Donald Trump, and I mean, can you not see the progressive goodness? So look at the Romans. Let's go back to the Romans for a minute. When they reached the of their heathenistic ways, it became a, it almost became a, a bacteria, a fungus, a virus that started to eliminate all of them. And eventually over time, they were so, they were included with, with all these other races that you couldn't tell a Roman apart from the next person. And so now we're in the world again where this is happening. Scotty, you're amazing, man. I never really thought that you had these kind of ideas. Like I knew you. I, so I always kind of took you as the progressive. Like, like you know, you, you wanted change. You wanted to see this. But you, it almost seems like have kind of an old based philosophy where you're, you encourage growth and everything, but not to the radical idealistic changes that it takes away from the wholesomeness or I know you said crude. It's not really a crude. It's just the the, the proper way of thinking. You yeah. know. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. It's really it's really based on you know I'm, you know everything is about forgiveness and kindness. I, I, that's it. It's all everything circles around that. Our life. I mean, couple couple points, and I always talk about this because I think it's a really important point, and 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 it'll tie to this. Is remember, the only thing that's real is you and me talking right now. And I mean, no, the only this thing, moment right here, this moment right here, that's it. There's nothing else real. I mean, that's like a that is a trippy thing to think about. Right. I mean, when you when you stop for a second, you go, wait a minute. So this is the only thing that's real. There's only one moment in time. It's always the same moment. Time mm -hmm. is an illusion. You're, mm -hmm. You wake up, you're 50, you wake up on your deathbed, and you go, oh, how did that even happen, right? What yeah. happened? All those years, where did that go? Like, you know, you know, 60, 70 years, it's like, what? You know, what, what's the yeah. deal? So, uh, you know, the whole idea that we we create this whole thing in our mind, this whole things of illusions and stuff. And remember, the mind is incapable of knowing truth from falsehood. It doesn't know right from wrong. The mind cannot make that decision. Everybody says, what do you mean? It's I a muscle. Make... It's only what it's true to remember. Only it's what you train it. Is. It's really that inner voice, that consciousness, that's something that says, don't do that or do that, right? It's the yeah, one that makes yeah. that decision. And how, you yeah. know, you can prove the mind is incapable, very simple, by saying, if the mind knew truth from falsehood, right from wrong, there'd be no war. There'd be nothing. Yeah, there'd everybody be no would war. be the same. Nobody, yeah, everybody. Nobody'd be blowing up their kid for some, nope. you know, hallucinatory god or some sort of you just wouldn't do that right that's yeah. that, but, yeah. but the mind can be programmed which then gets into what we're seeing today right we're mm -hmm. seeing that the that what's happening through the media and how it's basically controlling minds because the ai is coming in and Puppet. saying it's Puppet. listening to what you're doing all these networks it knows what you like it's going to feed you what you like and it controls so really in, in essence whoever controls the algorithms wins and if you yeah. think about it, the media networks, really, whoever controls the media controls the, the people because it's controlling the narrative and it's exactly. feeding it's feeding the people that are really uh, it's it's so imprinted. You believe it. Right. You constantly can believe this. So I'm seeing just the lack of free thinking kind of yeah. going away. The the is it's it's so strange to me because, you know, I you and me could be like best friends. Right. And you're my buddy. Yeah. Let's say I know you for 25, 30 years and I go like this. Dude, Dude, I read this. Check this out, right? And I got to it. But as soon as I hand it to you, if it doesn't go along with your beliefs or what you brought, oh, it's a lie. It's the same thing. You can't even have a conversation anymore. So what is that telling you? It's telling yeah. you 
and we're seeing people, friends pitting against each other. I'm watching Facebook and I'm seeing this insanity of best yeah. friends. Like I had to just lead him. I'm not talking to him because he's a yeah. Trump lover or this guy hates him, whatever the, the conversation, which is in totally the insanity of, Blown out of context, mind, right? Place. We're seeing yeah. it. It's best. So you're seeing the, what's happening with these devices, right? I mean, how it's starting to control people at a level. So who's ever running those? And it's not anybody's fault because everybody's doing the best they can. Everybody gets up every day and does the best they can. Even the guy that got up and pounded the old lady on the street, he couldn't do any better. That's why we got to live in a state of forgiveness. They don't mean to do this. People don't get up to be horrible people. It's just unfortunate the level of consciousness, which I would say awakeness is to the thing. And, you know, the one that's really, this is, uh, you know, the whole idea of, you know, uh, of, of kind of taking spiritual journey is to really look inward and try to try to understand who we really are. Right. And the, the really deal is, is there's the thinker and then there's the watcher. Most of mm -hmm. us are driven by the thinker and the watcher is there not really understood. And we walk around in a movie all day like, oh, this is real. Dun, 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 dun. And you completely miss <laughs> what's going on around you, which is the only thing that's real. So you actually live outside of the moment of in your, your mind. reality. You're yeah. missing it. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a very it, it, it's so this this insanity that we got going on, we're seeing is just really being controlled by the media. And I, if people want to really get are interested in this topic because for me it's very interesting to watch and again yes, yes. I'm, I'm a go with the flow the goal of life is to surrender to what is and just go with the flow because but to enjoy every moment of that flow well i mean what's good I could be or sitting, bad i could be sitting here right now just suffering going, oh my god what's going on this is horrible i mean everything right. can't pay my rent this is like the world's falling down and the reality is i'm talking to you having a cup of coffee in reality Right. So it's not so that. when you break out of that, you wake up and you can put your attention at where you are and go, holy cow, I guess everything is OK in the real world. The mind world is where I'm at. That's that whole thing's horrible. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that you don't have things you have to deal with. The problem is, is you get caught up so in them that in your mind, you just suffer like crazy. I mean, I take an example. A friend of mine bought a new car. And he was so excited about his new car. Next day, he came out and somebody had smacked it. And he, like, suffered for a freaking month every day. All he could think about was the car got hit. It was horrible. And I said, dude, your car was hit. It's done. It's You're going to get it fixed. All's okay. But he yeah. suffered. He suffered because yeah. he was identifying with thoughts. Great yeah. exercise to see. Because, I mean, the whole goal is, is to wake yourself up and what i mean by that is to get out of thinking thinking is our problem time is our is the biggest problem we have we put we project the future we project the fat past all this illusionary time stuff that just makes us completely crazy right i mean it, we we suffer because of that and so a great thing to do is just try this anybody out there throughout the day as you're walking around every time you can stop and just say where am i Put all your attention, every cell of your body on where you are. Like right now, I'm in my office, right? I'm sitting here. I'm in my office there. And then ask this one simple question. What am I feeling right now? Am I feeling any anxiety, tension, or fear? If I'm feeling any anxiety, tension, or fear, I know that I'm identified with the thought because I'm sitting in my office drinking coffee. There's nothing, no lions chasing me. Nothing is happening. <laughs> There's no thing. I'm just sitting yeah. here having a dang cup of coffee, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But so when you do that, you wake up just a little bit so that you don't identify with thinking as much because thinking is the problem. The egoic mind will drive you crazy. It's like this thing dancing back and forth. And if you catch yourself thinking the same thing over and over and over again, that's a pointer saying you are lost in thought. You are identifying yeah. with thinking and not paying attention to reality. And so the whole goal of, of all this and spiritual stuff and everything, this, that, this whole movement is, you know, they call it enlightenment or whatever, is the fact that you realize that you're not the thinker, you're really the watcher. And that you're really a meat suit watching, walking around with consciousness really driving who and what you are, right? So... I don't believe you die. I think it's impossible to die. I think your body, uh, I think, meat suit goes away, but you don't die. Consciousness. Really, I suppose you don't. 
I was gonna say, how how does how does the the consciousness, how does the energy die? Energy doesn't die. Energy just evolves and rotates and reforms. Well, but here's <laughs> here here's the truth. Here's an interesting. So my story was like this. You know, I was I became I got so intrigued in this the, the spiritual journey. And I ended up, you know, I fell into that book, The Power of Now, which was right. Eckhart Tolle's book, one of the great books. And he's truly one of the real deal spiritual teachers out there or uh, consciousness teachers. And uh, I ended up that book talked, spoke to me. So I read that book like 50, 60 times in a row. Wow. And I listened to it in my car for two years. I decided I said, I'm going to make my sh car the shrine because when I get in the car, I'm going to be in traffic. And I would pray for traffic. <laughs> Please be a lot of traffic today so that I can just be in my piece. shrine, not business, listen to Eckhart and going through yeah. this. So yeah. after this couple, two years, I was feeling pretty, pretty good. You know, life was good. I was up and positive, feeling good, thinking I'm really getting this stuff, right? I'm really understanding, meditating every day, all that. And then on yeah. April 9th at 10, 12, 2011, I wake up and I rub my eyes and I go, I go, holy cow, you know, 50 something years went by. 50 years went by probably. I blinked. What happened? I went, now I understood when they say time is an illusion because that whole 50 years was compressed and I'm sitting there in my bed. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. But here's where it got profound. I went and I looked and I said, but I realized that, that the voice that was talking through me hadn't changed since I was five. It's that same, it had age, it's that when I was five years old, it was that same thing that was looking around, whatever it was, and it hadn't aged, yeah. it hadn't changed how it talked to me, it wasn't, it didn't seem smarter when I was five, it seemed, don't do this, don't do that, whatever it is that's controlling you, you're not thinking about it, but I realized it happened, and at that moment, I said, you just don't die. That voice, so who you really are is is that, you're really, I'm whatever a, I'm what is that, call a non yeah. I'm what they call a non-dualist. I, I think it's all just one. We're really, consciousness is looking through the meat suit. That's who you really are. But here's where it got really interesting. I went and I read The Power of Now again, and the book was 180 degrees different than I had thought after reading it for two years over 50, 60 times. So really? I was tricked. My ego had tricked me in believing what was, what was new... real, right? Yeah. All these yeah. words, after that moment, when I read the book, the meanings of the words completely changed. I went, oh, so that's what was meant by that, where I thought mm -hmm. I was understanding. Because here's a pointer. Whenever you understand it, you've missed it. Because you can't understand it. You can only know it. And knowing it is completely different. Mm -hmm. When you know something, there's no, you know, what I'm talking about right now, I don't care what anybody says to me. They can tell me anything they want. And it, 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 this is baloney. But I know what I know. I, no, I know now, right? It's yeah, different. Yeah. Knowing it is different. There's just, it's so obvious. And it's such a, it's just, it's, you know, it. This thing just unfolds, right? Life just unfolds and you've just got to go for it. And you got to just, whatever happens to you, you always have to approach it. What I do is I just approach and say, that's exactly what I wanted to happen today. I just got pounded, beat up, whatever. I'm so glad that happened. That's exactly what I needed today, right? That's, and the reason is, is because it wakes you up. It makes you realize that life just unfolds and it's this trying to control and make ourselves crazy. It's, it's insane. You know, it's like with this year for us, we're Think, Experience, my company and our, our band, Think X and all that. This was going to be our biggest year. We had just mm -hmm. finished doing 40 shows in this immersive yeah, theater. you guys were on a roll last year. We were on a yeah, roll. Oh, yeah. We were in the midst of putting up this giant uh, $15 million uh, 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 immersive theater up at the Queen Mary. We're close to getting that. Yeah. And all this stuff started hitting. And we lost Europe and everything. But when I got up and I got my coffee up, you know, and I saw everything was closing down, I said, okay, this is going, it's all going away. Everything's going. I didn't, yeah. instead of going, oh God, what happened? I went and said, well, wait a minute. Those were all just illusions too, because they hadn't happened. Yeah, they're gone. I yeah, know they what were what just, happened. yeah. I went with the jazz yeah. fest, fell down, hit my head. I mean, who knows? And never able to perform oh, again, it right? Just, yeah. It was an illusion. So I just got mm -hmm. up and I said, okay, something new now. So I've completely rethought. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited about 
uh, opportunities for the entertainment space because I think this has completely changed and flip the entire model around. I think it's the greatest time in history for the independent artist. Um, I mean, think about it. I mean, you've got, look at what we're doing right now. I've got in the palm of my hand or what I'm talking to you on is a global broadcasting network. I can start a live stream anywhere, anytime, virtually in the world. And I can take the order. I can take and, and, I can give you money. And we've got this moment that we've now shared that now becomes a dual reality for the both of us. Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, I, I I never thought that I'd be living this moment, right? Yeah. So to be here at this moment right now is like, what we, you know, it's it's one of those things that was, you know, an entity that was already written and already flowing before I ever even thought of it, you know, thinking of it. Because in my heart, the moment I watched, it, the moment I saw your first interview on, on Jimmy Starr's show uh, with Ron Russell, I instantly, and it, and it wasn't even, I didn't know anything about you. I didn't, I haven't heard your story or, or any of the things you've done, but it, it was the energy that you had about that I instantly related to. Something inside of me was like that guy, that guy right there. And and I've even told, I, I, Eileen and I have had conversations about you and such, where, where I even told Eileen, I said, you know, like when I see my city, when I look back, I, I want to be able to got any pays, you know what I mean? Like, I want to be able to be an, an open-minded, like, hey, God, you've got it. You, you, somewhere inside the universe, it went up for you. And I see that, and, and others see that, you know what I mean? Whether they want to chase that lined up quickness or whatever you want to call it, I see it. And that's, I have that thirst for inner peace. You know what I mean? That's, well, that's, the, that's the whole game, dude. If yeah, you can, if you can achieve that inner peace, you're freaking you Bill won. Gates. Yeah, you, you, won. Just won exactly. the you just won the holy yeah. grail because what is life about? Life is about feeling good and, and, and being happy and not necessarily happy, but feeling good about what's going on. And if you can get to that point where you resist yeah. nothing anymore and yes. you got rid of it, then it's like you just won. Because you yeah. can't buy that. That's not something you can pay for. Because you know, you know, oh, you buy a new car, you got a big high, and then a month yeah. later, it's yeah. like, okay, it's just a car. Now, what's my next? High? Another You're just constantly another chasing, chasing yeah. that high, right? That's the yeah. whole idea. Yeah. Where what's so interesting is you don't need to. You don't really need that because you have everything you need right now. But what gets in the way is the ego and the mind, right? Okay, and, you want more. You always want more. It's what I want because I'll be happy yeah. when, right? When I get there. And, you know, when there's I'm a great. When I'm there, yeah. Yeah, there's a great uh, uh, Alan Watts, who's a great philosopher. Uh, you might want to look this up. It's fantastic. Okay. It's uh, it, if you just type into Google, it's called Life is Not a Journey. Life is Not Life a Journey, not Alan journey. Watts. And you can go on YouTube and you can see it. And what he does basically he talks about, he says, you know, life is really more like music or dancing. He says, okay. if music, if the, if the goal of music is not to get to the last note, it's no. about the, it's about the, the, oh. the whole ride, right? Of the whole thing, right? <laughs> it's about going through it. When you dance, you don't get up there and dance, dance to get to the end. So that's what life is. It's about <laughs> being, being now and not being, getting up and enjoying the, the, the ride. That's why, you know, in the Bible, there's a, you know, I've read all of them. I've been read all yeah, of oh, the yeah. philosophy oh, yeah. books. And yeah, one, but in the Bible, the one that I, there's a few, few things that always stand up to me, uh, stand out is like, forgive for they know not what they do. Really exactly. talks about the fact that how people are identified with thoughts and they don't mean what they're doing. They're just, they they're just can't, they're not in control of what's happening in this sense because they're not conscious to wake up. And the other one is stop and yeah. smell the roses. And what yeah, that's yeah. really saying is be present, be aware, wake up. Because that's yeah, what happens yeah. when you, whenever you like smell a rose or something happens, you, you become present for one second. You're there. You're like everything yeah, else. That happens, moment. Right? Yep, yep, and yep. so, so the whole key is is realizing that the, the problem you have is time and thinking. And the goal is to stop thought. Every new, every, every teaching, every meditation, everything points to the same thing. When you meditate, the goal is that's why you're you're trying to still the mind, this monkey mind that's just blah, 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 running around. Oh, yeah. I gotta do this, that. It's like crazy, <laughs> right? It's like it's like this thing that constantly goes in your head. 
and you're trying to still it and through meditation and then to the point where you know they talk about you know concentrate on your breathing so you're just trying to get your attention on breathing until the point yeah. comes to the day where thought drops the minute stop think thinking stops Thanks. for the first yeah, time yeah. you you like i'll remember the first time i used to meditate and finally thought dropped for the first time and the peace and the rush was so intense and then your mind comes around and goes what's that now you're messed up again up, you can't right? stay there for because that moment it wasn't for that moment though. for that little for a second but once you taste that you go hmm, what is this yeah, what is anymore. this like, it's like it's like ah, give me some more of this because it was so yeah, trippy yeah. to see what what was that like and then as That's you start great. to practice more and you get in it more you start to realize what it feels like to not think what does it mean how do i know and not think you know so it's called awareness it's about being hyper aware of your surrounding and everything and so awareness is the key you hear it in all the teachings they talk about becoming aware because in that space that's reality remember the only thing's real is us talking so the more attention i'm here and my mind is somewhere else i'm more there but the here's the here's the puzzle right this is the puzzle how do i know i'm aware that i'm aware how do i know i'm aware that i'm aware that's the problem that's the problem just know well that's where it goes no well, that goes back to the fact that after reading the book for two years and listening for two years, how I missed it, where I thought I was aware, I thought I understood it, I, I believe I understood it, and I thought I was there, but that was the problem. I you missed thought. it because I understood it, and I was thinking about it. I didn't know what it felt like to not think. I didn't understand. So the greatest thing that I've, well, I've been able to learn now, I can stop thought completely. I can just stop thinking, which is a trick. Right. And you and I know yeah. now. I know now because I know what that's like. I know what it there are is. Million, millions but of people a, medicate. Millions of people medicate from every day in various forms just to be able to not think. To try not to, right? But it's a fascinating yeah. thing because when you do that, the sense of peace and reality is so incredible. It's like it's crazy. But here's the stupid thing about it. It's so easy. It's so stupid easy. It's dumb easy, and everybody can Probably do it. Hard but it's, it's, hard it's hard there, and it's just yeah. a tiny point of view shift, like a, a quarter turn, right? It's like, yeah. But that's the puzzle, right? Is how do I know I'm aware that I'm aware? How do I know when I'm actually aware and I'm not being, my mind's not telling me I'm aware? Right. So that's right. really the trick. It's like, it's a very, it's a very interesting thing, but because of that, I now know I, I, you, you taste reality and then you just realize how insane you are. It's, right? almost, you it's almost, like, almost a theoretical quantum science of your inner self. <laughs> it's, re, it's really strange. It's a very odd thing, right? So, you know, yeah. and again, you know, this, the, the, you know, so all the time when you're going through this, you're co- trying to find pointers that wake you up, right? Things that will wake you up. That's why that asking that question. Where am I right now? How am I feeling? Now, I remember I tried to do that for the first time one day. And I said, okay, next day I'm going to get up and I'm going to do that all day. Next thing I know, I'm in bed that night. And I went, oh, I forgot. couldn't even ask that question once. I, I forgot. Myself, yes, I'm going to do it all day. But I was so asleep because I'm email, text. Blah, blah, blah. I yeah. couldn't even wake up enough to stop and ask that question to try to do that exercise. So I said, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna do it. Next day I did it like two or three times, but I could not maintain that because my mind would take me over so much. So I ended up putting stickers all through my house, my drawers, when I open them up, when I open the cabinet to go get coffee, sticker that said, wake up, right? Now, wherever I was, I'd stop and I'd say, what am I feeling now? Where am I at? Okay, yeah, I'm cool. Holy crap, I'm all freaking strung out. I'm all tense and I'm like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? It's because I'm identified with a thought, not reality. So once mm-hmm. you start to break that and you flip, the, the goal is to flip from being the thinker to the watcher. And then you go, is there two of me? That's the next one you go, wait a minute, yeah. who's watching? Right. <laughs> I was just really that. trippy. And then you start becoming so involved in watching, you start to see what a nut you are. I was insane. I would see yeah. myself go into, a, into meetings and I would watch myself in this meeting being completely an idiot, trying to defend a point of view or trying to push a deal through or something like this. And I come home and I go, I'm a nut. I'm totally insane. Well, I'm insane. So is everybody else. That's why yeah, you have yeah. to forgive for they know not that what they do. And it's right. horrible. I 
you know, it's like, this is one that like people can't understand, but you know, this whole thing, you know, this whole George Floyd thing, this is horrible, right? It's one of the most worst things, but I feel horrible for him too. The guy that did it, because I just know what a sad case. I, he, he can't help him. I mean, it was just sick, right? It's a sick human and it's a horrible yeah. thing, but I have to forgive him because he knows not what he does. And that's true surrender mm -hmm. to what is because everybody does the best they can. I truly believe that. And I'm not saying what he did is good. Believe me, horrible, no. horrible. But yeah, I have yeah, to, yeah. I feel bad for that other human species because if you're talking about be kind and be loving and caring about you have to be everybody. You have to be everybody, exactly. You know, it, well, it's, okay, so I, I, you know, I, I like how you said that because a lot of people forget that there's two sides coin, right? And I'm not saying he's innocent. I'm not saying he was insane. It was horrible. It's just it's the most it's, disgusting. It was just the worst. But as a from where I come from now, and I look at how insane I was, I just understand the insanity of that oh, yes. mind. And we yeah. can project on people what we think they should do, but we yeah. can't. We can't do that. So we have to live in a state of forgiveness. I mean, that's everything yeah. is about being yeah. in forgiveness 24 seven with everything there is. And, you know, so I, you know, my, my suggestion, people need to look to realize that, especially what's interesting. This is the one that I find very interesting is in the human condition is there's a giant thing going on right now, which you, you see people on Facebook that are love you know they their yoga classes they go to meditation yeah, they say yeah. love everybody kindness you know yeah. you've got to treat everybody with respect you know everybody's life this whole thing right and then it's turned around and trump whatever and all i'm saying is i'm not saying that he's good whatever but i'm just saying that's a point how can you be you, like that how you can you be sleep. like that <laughs> this true spirit yeah. the true thing is forgiveness and kindness We're for everybody, for everything, every human thing that there possibly yeah. is. And once yeah. you can start to get to that point, you just realize that it's sad. I feel so bad for him, his family, all those people, because not only is George's family, everybody, everybody's hurt in this, right? So it's everybody, sad for a lot all of people, us. Yeah. And, and we just need to be more forgiving and kind. And I just, you know, I, I, I really am, I'm worried about spiritual ego because I think that's one of the most dangerous things that can be out there because it can make you think you're, you're so moral and so right that you, that you forget that I you think, can, you know, yeah. where am I? So those kind of pointers, when you do that kind of action, that's all that's telling you is, wow, I'm more yeah. asleep than I really thought I was. Right. Yeah. We, we had the middle ages. We had the middle ages because of spiritual ego, spiritual ego. <laughs> oh, he can so. take over. It's, it's, yeah. it's not, you know, there's some danger in this because, you know, some people think my morals, I'm so morally better because I'm so, so spiritually awoke, awake and everything else. Yet they can turn around. And when you see those kinds of behaviors, you just go, you know, again, I'm, I, I'm not mad at them. I'm not, it's just what's happening. It's just, we're just discussing what we're, from my point of view, what I'm seeing go yeah. down. And so when I see this, all this stuff going on, I'm like, oh, those, those wacky humans. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Jimmy Starr posted a thing last week uh, of two aliens uh, uh, sitting there getting a cup of coffee, and one looks over to the other and says, "Did you catch the newest season of of uh, Earth?" And the other one says, "I know, right? It's absolutely crazy this year." And and in some senses, I mean, wow, that that is that's really true. I mean, if you take a step back. And you stop looking at your world for a moment and you look at the world. Wow. Well, the first wow. thing is I, to figure, first thing you have to do is discover your own insanity. Yeah. You have to be yeah. honest about You have to be honest and say you're, you're not. I mean, I, I remember I used to do back in the day, I used to do a ton of charity events. And I yeah, thought, yeah. I, I really thought, you know, I'm going out there and I'm doing these charity events because I'm really care about the charity. But when I started, but really it was all for myself, you, right? it was for me. Yeah. It yep, was my yep. ego. So I was you look good. It got ego. you to where you need to. Exactly. Ego. ego. It was my exactly. ego, right? And exactly. so it's like, it's like, it, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody because I'm as insane as everyone. I'm, I'm right? shoot. Insane. I'm the big. I, but you have I'll, to see I'll, it yourself. You have to see it in yourself first. Because yeah. once you do, I'll then be you honest can. With you, I'll know? be honest with you, buddy. I, 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 uh, I, I, I think it's my number one. That's the problem I think I suffer with the most every day. Um. I, I think that I'm this grand magical thing that's been set here on earth, this 
wonderful purpose. And, and in reality, that's, that's, that's my personal want. I want to be, I want to be this. I want to be that. I want, and in reality, I'm already something amazing. I mean, you, you, you know what I mean? So everybody yeah. only has one job in life. There's only one job. It's everybody do, is here for just the to same be purpose. you <laughs> help consciousness unfold. Cause that's what it's doing. It's unfolding yeah. this whole big giant ball. Everything is just unfolding. You look at the plants, the trees, this thing, we're just here to help this unfold. Just like all the other things that have happened. And that's, that's our right. only job. And so, you know, uh, I happen to be, you know, I, I happen to care about kindness, like a lot and people. Hey, and that's people. That's and once we're, you can forgive you're yourself. You're a psychologist, you're a psychologist, but you're so grounded in morality, ethicness, ethic, you know what I mean? Ethics and morality. I mean, it blows my mind that such a progressive person like you is still so grounded. You're grounded. You're not, you're not just out there floating around. You have, you have a base to you. And from that base, you have created what you just called your consciousness. That's a philosophy or an idea that I don't think very many other people can understand. I, I don't really think that that's a, well, it's, that's, that's, that's why you know, I think thing. <laughs> it's very complex. But you know what I believe yeah. is I think con I think there's quite a few people now that are really starting to wake up and taking this seriously. Yes. I'm seeing yes. more and more people taking that inward journey now. You know, because yes. you know a couple yes. things that people need to realize. You know, suffering is a, can be a gift. Yes. It's because it, inside everything there's a seed of grace, right? And the whole idea of so many people, that's why you hear guys that like went to prison and had the worst thing. They wake up, they finally have this thing, right? You've been through all the crazy things and you finally wake up. So then it's like, you're thankful. For me, I, I had a period of my life where my, I started this company and we took it public. It was all this stuff. And then everything started to blow up with the people and everything. And I got so bitter and I was so hurt and so pained. I was seeing my baby get trashed and all of that. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm so thankful that that it turned horrible it, turned thing it. happened. It completely yeah. woke. It made me take this journey, which is there's nothing more important. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. more important. So because now, to me, I look at life. It's more playful. I'm just, I, I do my best every day just to go with the flow, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know what happens is, is people go up and down, right? You're, you're happy one day, and then you're sad because something happened. You go up and down, right? As you start to take this path where you start becoming more awake, it goes like this. You're up and then you're down and then it gets a little more. And then finally you're, you're down for a little shorter period of time until the yeah. point where it starts to get to the point where it just kind of levels right. off. Right. Yeah. And I can, here's a funny story. Uh, about nine months ago, um, I went to a gig and it was about, I played my gig and I got in the car. It's about two o'clock in the morning. I'm driving home. I drive about 30 minutes. I reach over to get my phone. My phone's gone. Normally, you know what that's like when you lose your phone. Yeah, it's, just, it's like, oh, just, what the? <laughs> yeah. Where's my phone? Everything's out. Oh my yeah. god, go through this thing. Yeah. But here's what happened to me: is I looked over, and said, "Oh, my phone's gone." I went, "Wow, I think I must have lost it at the club or whatever." Yeah. And I realized at that moment I had no reaction. I sat there. I swear to God, I started crying. I I pulled over in the car and I cried like the biggest baby you've ever seen because I realized. I basically flatlined. Yeah, I yeah, actually got yeah. closer to what I imagined because I didn't identify with all of that. I just accepted the fact that the phone it was what it is. So I got Perhaps. back in the car. I drove back to the club thinking somebody was there cleaning up and stuff. I pounded on the door, the guy cleaning up. Oh, I said, I, I lost my phone. I think I left it here. I went and looked on the band. So nothing there. It was gone. I said, oh, okay, fine, it's gone. I'm going to go home. Boom, I turned around and started walking. I started got halfway to my car, and the guy goes, mister. He says, what? He says, is this it? So he yeah. found the phone. So then I realized I had no suffering. Yeah. I, didn't ha I didn't go through this amazing roller coaster, and I got wow. my phone back anyway, so everything and was plus, fine. Plus, you might have set yourself on a different outcome had you reacted like, because you may not have taken the time to go back and talk to the guy which initiated that moment of him finding the phone. So Whatever it was, I went through the whole ride with no emotional yeah. overtake. <laughs> yeah. And that was to me the biggest gift I'd gotten all year because I realized that I was able to not get taken down by that, yeah. like in a way yeah. that was crazy, right? 
So that was it. It was just being aware. I was aware. Okay, the phone's gone. Okay, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. So if I'm going to get all freaked out about it, it's like, why? What? what, what you can't, can't make it pop like back up. You can't make it reappear, right? Right. So, so but my conscience was yeah. saying, you know, don't freak out. It's only a phone. You'll figure it out. Is like uh, everything that's happened. Because I mean, one one thing that I've totally learned through all the years of living, and I've uh, been around a while, is yeah. that it always works out. It always works out. Maybe not the way I wanted it or thought it was, but, but it always out. worked out. And here's what's even more fascinating: there were times things didn't work out, and I was suffering. It was horrible and everything. And now that I look back, I was so thankful it didn't work out because if that would have worked out. This other thing wouldn't have happened. Exactly. Exactly. You right. know, I like I like how you said that because with that, you you embrace the idea that there can always be a different outcome. Um, so with the idea that there can always be a different outcome, did you see yourself back in your days of Super Tramp and Toto and, and Pink Floyd and things like that? Did you ever see yourself becoming that? Or did you always at that moment feel like that's who you were going to be? Well, you know, it's who I, it's kind of what, <clears throat> excuse me, it's kind of what I want. I always want, you know, I was all I'm very passionate, you know, practicing, mm -hmm. studying, thing. Uh, always wanted it to be. But I found myself all of a sudden got to a point where things were not just not happening the way I thought they were. And it was dragging me down because I was so locked in my mind. And what really gave me a first inkling of kind of shifting this kind of process of thinking and stuff was I ended up like I couldn't, I wasn't able to practice. I wasn't, I like try to practice oh, yeah. 10, 10 minutes in, I'd practice and I, I'd get so frustrated because I yeah, couldn't concentrate yeah, yeah. my mind. So this hamster thing is running through your head. You're laying in bed at night. It's just not happening the way what happened. I thought this was going to happen because I had goals and specific things were going to supposed to happen and they didn't happen. Yeah. That's why all the suffering is about identifying with a goal. I mean, goals are, that's why from a Buddhist point of view, they like, you know, the, the future, the goal is th the problem because yeah, that's the sin. You, <laughs> that's the sin. <laughs> you, 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 you uh, get also identified with it and you're all excited about it. But when it starts to go left, you suffer because you didn't happen the way you wanted to. So I was going through that and somebody had told me about a guy that was doing self hypnosis. And I thought, listen, I'm going to go try anything at this point. I was really not happy, even though things were doing OK. You know, I mean, it was OK, but I wasn't really getting to where I wanted to be. This was prior, yeah. earlier than the, the Toto, Super Trap, all those days. Right. OK, OK. And right. um, um, so he uh, I went to this guy. I remember his name was Richard Rossamora. I just remembered his okay. name so many years ago. Holy cow. Uh, he so I sat down and he started putting me through some exercises, right? He went through the exercise. First exercise, he said, I wanted you to think of everything that's good about your life. Take it and think, take a week. So I wrote down, I spent the whole week. Yeah, you know, I got some gigs, I'm eating. You know, I was able to get a house and, you know, some things. So I was like, okay, cool. Now he says, I want you to write down everything that's bad about your life. So I, okay, I can't concentrate, not getting enough gigs, not making, but all these things were happening. And then he said, now I want you to write down the ideal you. So exactly who you'd want to be, right? And how you yeah. want to deal with things. And then, so what happened was, is through self-hypnosis, he would then, re you would do these exercises of visualization, right? So I would imagine, so take a situation. I used to go to this club gig and uh, I used to, I, you know, I, I own the, I own the, the, the van. I had the gear. I did all yeah. the work split the money yeah. with everybody but always got the gigs did all the stuff and then i'd go to the gig and then all of a sudden like the drummer wouldn't show up or something and then i'd get the club owner on my back and i would suffer and i get all pissed mm -hmm. off i'd be really mad right and i'd be all yeah. angry and i'd come home and i was you know it was a period of this thing so I, he would imagine so what would happen is the ideal me would imagine going to the gig over and over again and then this something like that would happen but i would see myself just dealing yeah, with it Dealing with it, not getting freaked out. Okay, hey, we'll just do duo until he gets here, whatever. And, yeah, you know, how yeah, I talk yeah. to the club owner. And I just reinforce that over and over again. And just imagine myself every night through hypnosis, seeing that scenario go down, right? And yeah. all of a sudden, I, one day I'm at the gig and the guy doesn't show up and I'm going through it. And then I realized, holy cow, 
I dealt with it because I already pre-figured it out before yeah. it happened. And I reprogrammed what I was thinking. That was a big moment for me because I saw that. So I would always imagine myself, you know, being on the big stage, going up there, knocking people mm-hmm. out. This, and just imagine seeing that so often in my head and reprogramming. That's exactly that. what I, that's what I, that's what I wish. <laughs> yeah. So, and that really helped me. Now, what's really fast, I mean, that changed everything because it is, it happened kind of the way that I envisioned it through the visualization. But here's the real wild part is now I realize that was all changing thinking not dropping thought. So now I, compl- I don't have any, I don't, that has nothing to do with me anymore. That was just a stepping stone to get to a point where I yeah. get rid of it. But yeah, it's a yeah. great one for people that are excessive thinking that are having specific things going on. Then dude there, I can't tell you anything more than doing a self hypnosis, understanding, going through that and programming that. on a, regular basis imagining the ideal you in all the situations that you see yourself having a problem but you don't have a problem and you will find out that once all of a sudden what will happen is you'll just go through it one day and you're like huh whoa i didn't even realize how i dealt with that it was funny i saw an interview with madonna once and how she visualized all of her gigs and her show all this stuff to the point and how it was important that so when she got there she was just going through the motions she had already kind of pre-programmed it. She had already done it, yeah. Kind of figured yeah. out. And Barbara Streisand, I heard her article talking about the same thing. So there's something about that. And I think that programming, that's programming thinking. And when you get pat, when you finally get to a point, you then you go, oh, I don't need that one anymore. You drop yeah. that one totally out. So it's a good stepping stone and it's a great way to really help because it's so much of it is remember, the only thing's real is you and me drinking coffee. All that other stuff right, is like it's insanity. Yeah. So the goal is is to break free of that, right? That's that's okay. the ultimate goal. And it does take devotion well, though, because your mind and ego will do everything it can to say, hey, no, man, don't 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 be doing that right now. You need to be over here working on this project because this is much more important. Now you got those emails you got to deal with. You got you got stuff you got to do because if you don't do that, that's what the mind will play games with you all day long. And so anyway, there you go. <laughs> no, I absolutely no, I love it. And, and you know what? Program thinking. Uh, you know, a lot of us don't realize that the way we think is something that was already programmed inside of us from somebody else. You know, I, you know, it's not um, per se knowledge, it's more experience, right? All what we learn is is experience. We have learned from what has happened, us, what we go through, what we messed up that time and figured out that time, or things like that. So when, when I program thinking, I really like that. I really believe in that. I actually, I actually, I have a wife and five, soon to be six kids, and I teach or I try to, I try to instill that in all of them. Um, you are what you choose. You are not what somebody does to you. You're not what the situation happened. You are what you choose. So if you choose to react a bad way, you that bad person. If yeah. you choose to, to react a good way, you are the superhero. So it, 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 that program thinking is something, you know, it's, I want to say it's, a, it's a, an old philosophy that everybody has to think the same way. But if everybody kind of collectively understood the same lessons, we pretty much think the same way. And so I I. Mean, I'm a firm believer in program thinking because I see that the outcomes from program thinking are positive even by yourself and not from somebody else programming you to be the way they want you to. So when you go to school, the teachers you, you do things this way, you do things that way. Then you come home and your parents say, well, you do things this way, you do things that way. One day you wake up and you realize, no, I do things this way. I do things this way. And as soon as you break their program thinking and you start creating your own program thinking, you start living your own life. And yeah. that's part of a process, right? It's a process. It's all it's a, process. a process. I mean, that's the goal. Yeah. Your job here is to help consciousness unfold. And so, exactly. this ride, like I said, you blink your 50, blink your indebted. There's time is a total illusion. We make up time in our head. There's yeah. really no yeah. such thing as time. 
It's yeah, always you know, it's you, always the same moment. It's always the same time. It's now. It's always an, now. an animal doesn't an animal doesn't know what time it is. The time was created by a group of men sitting down and creating an end. A, 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 what is it? A, a calendar based upon um, when the sun god would rise and when he would fall and all these heathenistic beliefs. So yeah, no time is irrelevant. Time is what you create it to be. You yeah. can enjoy a moment forever, or it can be gone in an instant. So. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on a little bit. I, I, I want to kind of radiate. Uh, I, I read that you're a professor. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> what what's that like? I mean, I felt I, well. You know, actually, it, yeah, I would not say. I mean, I I, I was uh, I got to. Well, here's what happened. You know, I used, I'd go out and lecture. I go. I used to go okay. to USC and I did some lectures. I, I I developed this thing called space, and it stands for story plan. Army conversion education. It's a business principle for startups. And okay. I adapted this, okay. I built this for really to teach artists on how to be a business, right? The story is the most important part because your story is what you're going to have. And when I say, I ask them, what's your story? And they say, oh, I'm from San Francisco, blah, blah, I play guitar, blah. I said, that's nobody cares about that story. The story yeah, I'm, I'm talking artist. about, the story I'm talking well, about, I'm, I'm an artist. Story. What do you stand for? Right. What what purpose do you have? What what problem are you solving? And I tell an artist that and they said, what are your problems? Are? I like to smoke fatties and write songs. Well, I said, that's great. <laughs> it's a hobby. But as a business, you have to figure out how you to, think study, especially yeah. in a world today where you can't sell music. There's no place to sell music anymore. Yeah. And live stream, you know, streaming is yeah. for, for the Great. few at the top is okay but you know two to three percent of the, the the spotify catalog can make some money but you know when you're you're getting you know, roughly five thousand dollars for one million streams and 95 percent of the entire spotify catalog doesn't even have a million streams you can see what that means so uh it's a it's it's a bad business flow. so it's really about how do i rise above the noise and be because remember this is the greatest time in history because now it's a direct to consumer. We're moving into a direct yeah, I can world. I can push my own products. So, it's all about so, direct so, to consumer. So if I if, if so so say because I'm an artist, I, I and I I'll even be blunt artist. I'm a struggling artist. Okay, I've been trying to be an artist for almost twenty years. Okay, in fact, it's it's my primary passion. It's my primary getting on that stage and performing and creating those songs. There's that's my Zen. That's that's my that's my piece, right? Um, so I, I've always envisioned myself being here, doing that, so on and so forth. And and you know, uh, there's that want versus reality, so on and so forth. But let's let's focus on what we're talking about. I I, I am an artist, and I'm struggling. And so I'm now enrolled in your class, okay? And I want to learn more about space. Yeah. So what what is the you, you walk into class and the first first lesson that you throw out there right off the bat, and 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 I'm not talking about you know marketing or or the business model. I, I I mean, how do you intrigue them to choose to become better? You know, this is a very interesting conversation because I was actually very surprised. <laughs> I had 40 kids in that class that one year we taught, yeah. the first year I did this. And the thing that was really interesting to me was I was very amazed to see how there was very few that had any curiosity. It mm. seems like curiosity is kind of going away in mm -hmm. some sense. And so it was kind of difficult to get everybody to get on board. I was actually surprised that here I'm in a school, you're spending 60000 a year to go to. It's a serious university. And... I mean, yeah. some of these young kids with no want or learn or no, no curiosity to try. Yeah. To so it was a little difficult. It was actually a little disheartening for me, to be honest, because, you know, I love to teach. Uh, I think I I'm a pretty good teacher. I love to do this, but I got to find people that want to learn. Right. Yeah. And, like, yeah. and uh, the excitement is getting the feedback. And I just it was it was very difficult to get any feedback. But, you know, the whole the whole idea of the class was really to say, listen. This is like the greatest time for anybody independent entrepreneurial thinking because we can go out and you have the tool sets are cheap. You have the ability to build your own audience. You can go direct. You can take the order. You can actually really build a business without having a, a, a middleman if you get yeah. yourself educated. And that means you have to learn. So, you know, again, let me just walk, let me walk through space real quick because I think that'll Let's help you. Real 
So yes, story, do story is critical because that has to be something that has us helps gives people a reason to get behind you, right? What is the story? If you remember when you watched uh, any of those, uh, 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 you know, um, like The Voice or some of those shows, the first thing they do is they set up the story of the struggle, how much you're doing, because they're getting people to buy into the story, right, right, who you right, are, yeah. right? The story, yeah. it's, it starts with that, to get you intrigued. So the right story. So I always talk about what problem are you solving? What value are you bringing? What, what, what are you doing that's going to create a rally cry? Get people to get behind you, right? So figuring okay. out that story. that Everything starts there because once that story is in place, and it needs to be about your purpose, what yeah. are you doing that makes sense? We're now in a world where it used to be kind of a giving back world. I believe now because of COVID and everything, we're moving into, we're moving into give forward. Everything we do as business people are going to have to now support because I think we're going to see one of the most incredible times of, you know, homelessness and people and things that are going to happen because of this lockdown, which I believe yeah. is even worse than the virus. I think it's going to be way worse, to be honest, as time goes on, when you look at the consequences of what it meant, and what it's done to people's lives. And I mean, it just goes on and, and on. Mentality, yeah. mentality yeah. everything, you know, people's whole yeah. livelihoods completely lost. Their business is gone. Everything yeah. they've done, you know, families to feed. I mean, it's going to be incredible. So us as society, we have to figure out how we're going to help. So I always talk about that story is figuring out something that's valuable besides your music. Because remember, you can't sell music. What you can sell today as an artist is really a couple things. One, the lifestyle and the relationship. The lifestyle, lifestyle that's you know, it's like life, lifestyle, cool. You might have brands that are around what you do and you can sell the things, a lifestyle. People will pay for that if it's compelling and you can broadcast every day through shows. You can get people to follow you and start getting that. Yeah, and the yeah, second yeah. thing is, is an experience. People will pay for an experience, right? So you need to understand that that's the new model. So as an artist, you know, you're not going to sell music. Music is going to be your Lost lead. It's the thing that separates you from everybody else that gets the attention. So the key is what you're going to sell. Something based on lifestyle, the relationship, and or of an experience. So those are the things we have to figure out. So once you get your story together, the next thing is the P, which is plan. Now, I, I study, I'm a big lean startup guy. I belong to, I'm a fan of the lean startup movement. Lean startup, for those who don't know, is a process that's really come out of Silicon Valley. It's all these companies. And it's based on um, a couple of very, very interesting pr principles. One, fail fast. Whatever your idea is, test it, validate it, and fast as you possibly can. If it's failing, drop it and move on. Because so many people will start on something, got this idea, they think it's going to be great, it's going to be the greatest thing, they work and everything, and then when they finally launch it, nobody cares and they didn't come. Because you didn't do the process that ties to lean. So lean is fail fast. Second one is is uh, test and validate. So figure out what you're doing, your idea, get it tested. So I can tell you with my software company, I used to have interfaces to the, the designs of the app. I'd go to Starbucks, I'd find some different people. I'd walk up and say, can I buy you a coffee? I'd put designs, I'd have a set of questions and I'd get feedback that way, right? Yeah, yeah, Until yeah, I, yeah. once I started getting strong signals, then I pour gas on it. So you want to, uh, uh, you know, fail fast. The other one is don't run out of resources. If you only got a thousand dollars, you're not going to go blow your thousand dollars till you know what you're going to spend your thousand dollars on. It's going to give you a return. So the idea is with lean is what is the smallest thing you can do that's going to give you the biggest that's amount of impact? impact. What's yeah. the most easiest, the fastest, the smallest thing that you can possibly do that will give you the most bang for your buck? That's why you're doing this all pre before you do it. And there's a uh, there's a thing called the lean canvas. And the lean canvas you can get at lean stack. Dot com L-E-A-N-S-T-A-C-K.com. -E and the Lean Canvas is a one-page business plan. And it's a process of nine questions that you have to answer. And you go through a process to iterate to help you figure out what you're going to do. But more importantly, it tells you what you're not going to do. Because we as artists will spend a whole bunch of time. It's like somebody says, I I'm going to go out and make this album. And we're going to go do it. When I first thing I question, I'd say, well, it sounds great. Make albums. Awesome. Cool, fun, create a process. Is this a and business or hobby? Business or hobby? What do I want to do? Yeah, or yeah. How do I make money? If it's about building a business and make, making money, then we have to think a little differently. I would say, well, first of all, where are you going to, who's going to listen to the album? First of all, it's a singles world. Remember, 
The big thing we have now that we never had before is data. With that data, we can make very good decisions on what we do and what we don't do. I don't do anything anymore without data. We yeah, test yeah. and validate everything, get the data, see if it's pointing in the right direction. And if it is, there you go, right? So, um, so the idea is, is that what, make the smallest thing. So the Lean Canvas runs you through nine questions, and it's great because it's interactive. You can go in, you, you sign up, get a thing, and then in each canvas, there is a, a video that you can watch. It tells you how to answer the questions. And it's questions is it's like, what problem are you solving? What, uh, who is your, uh, who is your, your influencer networks? Uh, yeah, there's a whole series. I'm just blanking off the, the top of my mind. Who's your competition? Uh, what's your business model? I mean, these questions that you have to ask yourself to go through. So I use Lean Canvas. So space is about building a plan based upon the story. What's my plan? Once I have my plan, then it goes to A, which is Army. And Army stands for, it's really your influencers and your super fans. A piece of data that everybody needs to understand is we now know because of the data that 60% of your revenue will become from 1% to 3% of your audience. The super fan. So if you have 100,000 followers on yeah, Twitter or something, <laughs> you're, 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 the people that are your super fans are those 300, and that's the people yeah. you want to find. Yeah, and now through growth, ha through growth hacking and data analysis, you can find those people. That's the beauty of technology. If you have the right people, I can go find that's those people and figure out who they are. So you start by yeah. building your influencer. Who's your army? Who are the people that are closest around you? What is the influencer network you have around you? Who's there, mm -hmm. right? Even simple things like I asked artists. I said, you got your all the people, your fans that are coming. Do you know what they do? Do you have an idea that, oh, Bob, who comes to every one of my gigs, do you really know what the guy does? No, I never really paid that. He comes, shows up my gig. Oh, he's yeah. a web developer and he designs websites. Oh, he's your biggest yeah. super fan. Oh, you need a website. Yeah. Hey, Bob. <laughs> I haven't got much money. I've got no money right now. I need some help. Can I work something but out? I, I, you know, yeah, I'll give you a shout out. Or, yeah, exactly. I'm going to help yeah, you. So. Help, me, help me out, brother. And if I get make some money, I'll work a deal with you. Same I, with learned this, I learned the super fan part of that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's I all about that. a super fan. And the perfect yeah. example is I have a friend that's a, she's an artist. Uh, she's fantastic. Uh, she, she says roughly 125 of her fans get, pay for her nut all year. Yeah, because the stuff yeah, they sell, tough. it's 125 yeah. people, right? Because remember, yeah. there's a there's a model that was out. Uh, uh, Kevin Kelly from Wired Magazine, I don't know, about 10, 15 years ago, coined a term called the thousand true fans. And a true, true fan, fan, a true fan is defined as somebody that will spend $100 a year on you. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, I'm selling stuff, I've got gigs, whatever. They'll spend $100 a year. If I have 1,000 of those fans, there's my first $100,000 in revenue. So my model is go small, build a repeatable process, and then scale. So I even change the model. I say that it's really 200 super fans. That's what you want to discover. Because those yeah. 200 people, if I can build a repeatable model around 200 people, that they keep coming back, they either pay on a subscription or they buy stuff from me or I have stuff to sell. If I figure what that is, then I can scale. Okay. So. The, I, that's why the idea is so the army is so critical because that's your that's your that's your base these super they can help yeah. spread the word they can help you do things they can they're they can they're keep you going independents they need a lot of money to keep going nowadays so that's right so there can be the support mechanism so the army yeah. is the next thing and let alone you know if you got a band or people do you know the drummer what his dad does i mean yeah well he's a banker what does he do at the bank Oh, he's yeah. executive vice president. He's a finance. Oh, he's a so finance person. He's a finance guy. Oh, that's interesting. And then, or oh, by the way, the bank is. Do they ever do any fundraisers, or do they sponsor yeah. anything? Do they do right, anything? Right, right. right. So you start looking at the influencers. Open what about doors. does your dad have access to somebody else at this? I mean, so it's really identifying your army, and that's so critical that you can find. And I can give a perfect example. I did all the Monty Python. I worked with Monty Python for about 18 yeah, years. Yeah, I read that. I read and, that, yeah. um, we, we launched Python Online, which was their on, yeah. first online community years ago. This one first yeah, yeah. When it was first happening, when CD-ROM was big, and we started the first kind of web thing. You didn't have video and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pictures and words, like blogging and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the first thing we did was we started, I said, I need, Photoshop, I need bloggers, I need 
uh, 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 actually, actually video at that time was just starting to come. I need video people. I need editors. And I built a super fan base of a super fan army. And we did a project. We did the launch of the uh, 40th anniversary of the life of Brian. So we created yeah, yeah. a campaign, which was with called Brian sightings. And we took Brian's and we built a thing that you could download and you could put your Brian in a cup of coffee, take a photograph and then so, share yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or I had I had this army of people take every famous photograph they could find and put Brian in the photo in the photograph. So you got Marilyn Monroe and the president and there's Brian in the back row. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the Last Supper, and There's Brian in the Last Supper. All this stuff That's to create great. this campaign. They put together over four thousand pieces of media and it didn't really cost me anything. It was a super fan. Some posters, yeah. you sign things. Yeah. And everything. So the super fan is really important. So that army is really critical, but you got to get to understand that army, who that yeah. is, right? And how, what they do and, and put them in buckets so that you know when you have something that you want to go do, you know who I know who to go call, who to call yeah, yeah, and see yeah. to help me. Because remember, yeah. when you go to these people, you want to make sure you know what's in it for them. It's called with them, yeah. you know, yeah. With, yeah. with them, what's in it for me. So you always put yourself in the head of the other person because the first thing you're going to say is, yeah, it sounds great, but... Really, they're asking, well, what's in it for me? So if you yeah. can analyze that beforehand and say, I know why this is going to be important to that person, especially if I present it the way I'm going to present it, I figured out why it's important to them, then they'll buy in. So I yeah. always work that way. When I start my companies, I always go find the influencers because the game is to influence the influencers first because they're the one that's talking about it. It's so much easier to go into a meeting when you've been yeah, introduced by an influencer. Yeah. Some influencer yeah. said, Man, Scott, you got to talk to this guy. He's got something really for you. You get in the yeah, door, man. you got a warm audience. A lot harder yeah, to cold call, hey, I'm Scott Page. What am I doing? And so yeah, I always yeah. go for influencing influencers, which is part of that army. You need to identify, put that. The next. Uh, real, so that's, so, real quick, real quick. I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I, oh. I want to take this moment because you are talking about super fans that we is sharing common a super fan. And, and it'd be time to give her a shout out. Her name is B. Claudia. So, Dee Claudia is the greatest. Yes, yes, she is. This is she, she is so, awesome. Yeah, she first yes. of all, she was so kind. She we we needed she put together these press kits for us yep. and all this yep. stuff when we first started yep. out and just did it out of pure love yes. and kindness. Yes. And I am a yes. I am a I'm, I'm bowing down to be Claudia right now. Yes. You, are, <laughs> exactly. you are a fine person. You are a real yes, human she being. was she was amazing. I, I had an album just come out last year called uh, Big Drinks. And uh, she was instrumental in some of the fan art and some of the um, some of the just some of the production that she did, some of the graphics and things that she was capable of doing. Wow, just such she a is great the best. She's the yes, best. I'm she very is. happy to know her. <laughs> she you know, and it's, it's it's that whole crew, right? It's yeah. Eileen who is one of the greats. Yeah. Right? Eileen yeah. Shapiro, the rock uh, star journalist. I call her the rock therapist. Because yeah. I basically talk to her virtually every night. It's beautiful to yeah. talk to her. She's and she's, yeah. Talk about being a kind and giving person. It's great. And then, you know, and Jimmy and Ron are fantastic, too. I mean, that, that whole clique of people are just such beautiful yeah. humans. Really yes. kind, uh, giving humans. Yeah, so uh, okay. that's great. So I didn't know you knew. All, I didn't know you knew all of them. That's great. Yeah, I'm in circle. I like. I, I'm in this circle. Like I, I talk to Jimmy and Eileen probably at least once a week, once every other week. And and uh, um, in fact, um, they helped me a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and connecting the dots. And she was a very big. Um, he really helped my career. Um, you know, it's hard being a white rapper and being unique like me because I don't talk about, you know, beating people up and all this other right. stuff. I talk about, I, I, I try to bring substance and class, not trash, right? Thank so, you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right? So, so Jimmy, is a, he, he backs me a lot. He really believes in what I've got going on. And, and he did some PR work for me that was, wow, just amazing. It really changed my life and my career during that 2018-19 moment. And we became really great friends. And now there's nothing. He, in fact, uh, I, I'm waiting on his comic book. He sent me his comic book. So I'm waiting on, uh, I'm waiting on seeing to read that comic book for the first time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and I love those guys. Me and, too. And of Big course, Lady, Lady Lake, you make music. She's, she's awesome she's, too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, but anyways, to get back, I didn't, I didn't mean to get us off the track there, but uh, so the C in space. Oh yeah. So that's, that's conversion. Because okay. if you're not converting, it's a hobby. There's a difference. Businesses make money, hobbies don't. 
totally fine to be hobby man music is great i go for it it's, i'm not saying but if it's about being a business then you have to convert so yeah. conversion understanding what conversion funnels are learning yeah. what a conversion funnel is i mean so this is the point you, you got to understand so conversion funnels are really about so people understand you can go google all this stuff which is great google's your friend you can find anything on google ask it a question it'll come back and give you everything man it's beautiful I tell my kids that's their father go ask your father yeah. Go ask your father. That's funny. Go ask your father. I don't know that. Go ask your father. That's funny. But yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah. So the conversion. So learning about conversion funnels, and that is a con funnel. A funnel. A conversion funnel is like when you meet somebody for the first time, and then it, it, let's say you have a product or something you want to sell. You want. You need to build trust. So the funnel is like the first time I meet you. I do this the next day, next day, like musicians, it's like you meet somebody, their email should go out. Hey, great meeting you today. Thanks for being here. Here's a here's a free download to my thing or whatever it is. And then the next day or two, a week later, they get another in their drip system. They get more communications. And what you're doing is you're funneling them through building trust, creating value for them to the point where they actually will buy the purchase or support whatever effort you're trying to do, whether that's selling merch, come to my gigs. Uh, buy a yeah. book, uh, sign up for yeah. my subscription service, way whatever. Of drawing, I mean, way so of learning how funnels work, and the beautiful part of funnels are, is it's so defined now. We know so much because of the data. What works, doesn't work. It's like, you know, like say you want to go do a campaign for your one of your your music, your 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 thing. You want to get your your music out there, and your goal is is the music's out there. But you want to drive people with your music to a landing page where you can capture the contact information so you can start the funnel. I can start talking them through the funnel. So you've moved them through, you got them there, and now you've got a drip system going on with your email, meaning you've got six programmed emails that are going to go out. Each one adds value, gives them something to the point where you want them to then sign up to your newsletter, to whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. So the good news is, any of those campaigns, you can just type in top 10 best marketing campaigns of yeah, last yeah, year, yeah. and then yeah, you yeah. go look at them. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. what I try to tell people when they're doing a marketing campaign, I go, well, what is your ice bucket challenge, right? And what I mean by that is if you remember the ice bucket challenge, do you remember that marketing campaign? Mm -hmm. Raised mm -hmm. over $100 million. And the mm -hmm. reason was, what was interesting about it, it had a viral coefficient because I had to challenge you yeah. to do it. So it kept adding, it kept challenging kept passing it on so yeah. when you've got a campaign of some sort is why would somebody take that and pass it to somebody else that's where you have to think and that's part of it and once you get somebody to pass it how am i converting people driving them someplace to capture their data to be able to get to know that person to move it forward so and yeah interaction. conversion conversion right that's that's the big one and then the very last one after you've got your conversion figured out is e which stands for education, because all of those things I just set up there, unless you get educated, you can't do it. it ain't gonna yeah, happen. Exactly. And so what I mean by that is you need to start following thought leaders, which is great. Yeah. Blog posts. Yeah. You can start going to some great ones like, you know, copy blogger is fantastic because it teaches you the art of copywriting and growth hacking. You know, growthhackers.com is, you know, growth hacking is the game. It's like understanding how the yeah. algorithms yeah. work. And then yeah. being able to put marketing and tech, not, you know, like a programmer and a marketer together to use data and science and all that to find out where your audience is and how to sell an artist. So that's my space course. So that's what I basically teach is artists how to be their own independent, uh, you know, thing. So there you go. A little quick space. All right. And then yeah. I became a professor. Yeah. They asked me to come teach there after I was lecturing. They said, nobody teaches this stuff. So I went and did it there, and I, I taught classes. I, I, I'm, I'm actually got – I'm, I'm glad I got the abridged version. I've got the uh, Space for Dummies. You remember the book that came space out? Space for Dummies, it, yeah. Yeah, Space for Dummies. That's what I've got now. So, all right, uh, we've, we've went way over. I absolutely love talking to you. Oh, you, great. You, your mind is brilliant. Well, thank you very wow. much. No, thank you. Fun to thank talk you to you, too. Because, yeah, hey, I appreciate it. Uh, but real quick, man, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about bullets, okay? About so, what? The, the 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 coffee the the drink the coffee in oh, the bulletproof oh yeah yeah bulletproof, bulletproof. that's what it is bulletproof uh, yeah 
I love that coffee, man. It's got brain. It's really good because it's got some this brain enhancement stuff. When you drink it, it makes you really clear. It's very okay. clear. It's, there's a, there's a, a clarity that happens out of that. Um, Dave Asbury, who owns Bulletproof, I became friends with through the years. And uh, it's great stuff. I love Bulletproof coffee. I don't have any with me. I've got regular right now, but uh, regular oh, Octane. Sorry. Nothing I like just wanted to give you a chance that Thank every you. interview I've ever watched, you always mention them. So I, I, I didn't want to break stuff. tradition. <laughs> I love that stuff. Um, and of course, you know, you can be found all over at I am Scott Page, correct? That's, I that's am it all Scott over. Page. That's my the handle. You can just search me there. And, you know, obviously just Google. If you Google Think EXP or yeah, Think yeah. EXP, you'll find all of our dome shows and all about the band Think X, which is, you know, Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction, Woodward Fisher. Yeah from Fishbone and Kenny Olds from Kid Rock's band. And, you know, where it's a great band. And uh, like I said, we've been doing this Think experience has been our Think Floyd experience. So we've been doing that. We're getting ready to go to yeah. uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas, to do one of those outdoor uh, drive-in theaters on November 1st, uh, which is going to be fun. And then we've got uh, nine shows in Quebec City coming up in a big immersive theater, which is going to be crazy with a bunch of guys that were out of the Cirque du Soleil thing. And we're doing a crazy show in this beautiful new incredible facility that now they've outfitted for the covid friendly and we're going to do yeah. uh, nine shows there so uh you know that and then i'm getting ready to launch living dot uh dot live which is going to be uh our our whole new business model for the entertainment industry which combines live entertainment tied with streaming but really takes advantage of the two-way streaming the yeah, fan yeah. in stream piece bringing yeah. fans into yeah. the show and then yeah. also tied to delivery services because that allows to to have wow. a conversation i can hand you something i can't give you something through the screen before right. we talk but i can have something right. show up at your house and then we can share the experience together so exactly. we're building yeah. a whole business model around a new kind of an experience in the home that ties with all of those things that, uh, because I believe that we're going to be in this new model for a while. I don't think it'll ever go back. And even if it does, it's this new stuff's not going to go away. I think the virtual world is going to be how we're going to communicate because dude, we're talking, we're virtually connected now. And I can, bring yeah, in, exactly. I can bring in hundreds of people and we can all be yeah. talking and chatting worldwide. So yeah. it's really about how do we break, break, <laughs> Bust the third wall. I mean, how do we get past that? And that's where we're focused right now. So yeah, I'm very excited about the future. I think this is the greatest time I've seen in my lifetime as an entrepreneur because there's yeah, so yeah. many problems that need to be solved. And then yeah. you've got all the big corporate entities that are like, well, they're stuck trying to deal with how do they plug, put, you know, put their thumb in the dike of everything that's crashing and burning in front of them. It leaves young entrepreneurs and uh, folks like myself, the ability to say, well, wow, how can I go solve a problem? Yeah, I don't need what anybody. can I do I've for you? Yeah. Yeah. I've got broadband, i got audience, yeah. I've got yeah. everything I need. I'm going to yeah. just go make my stuff happen without any, I don't need any third party, right? So it's a crazy time. I mean, it's very, you know, sad in so many ways because, you know, there's a lot of destruction and pain and sorrow that's going to come out of this. But, you know, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. And really, I think we just got to focus on you know, okay, now what? What's the opportunity, right? Whatever's happens, happens. I can't worry yeah. about the past anymore. I can only work into where I'm going right now. Right. The future is, a, is is just what it's going to be, right? So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, brother, thank you so much, man. I, I really am. I not only am I encouraged a little because, uh, you know, as a as that as that entrepreneurial mind or as that artist that's trying to become the business and, and wanting to wanting to be more enlightened and more awoke i have thoroughly enjoyed this it helped a lot um not only with the notes that i took in and the things they told me to check out but actually getting to understand you a little bit more like i told you in the very beginning seeing you the very first time on the jimmy star show i said right there that that's that is the model you are the model you're the oh, model boy. for an artist oh, of an artist of, of, of what an artist should strive for you you didn't focus and just one thing you you made it about completely you know opening up all options and at the same time you're leaving an impact each area that you do and you're doing it my favorite way classy not trashy i'm i mean i'm yeah, off with that right? need, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm i'm you know i'm a little sad about our entertainment industry and the messages that are coming out of the music these days 
I was going to say me, it, it really is it kind of gears right into that Roman Empire. Everybody yeah. having a great time. The gladiators, time, gladiators, the whole nine yards. You know, I'm just, I mean, I'm just <laughs> not sure that it's healthy for a lot of the kids to hear this stuff and to create that kind of moral fabric. And that's why I think you know we need to have these conversations. I appreciate you letting me have that conversation on the consciousness oh, that's because great. that's my favorite subject and. You know, it's yes. funny in all my interviews, I start steering it that way because I think that's and they, the most they, they immediately push away. They immediately push away. Don't so I try, well, some do, but some don't, which is good. So I try to have the conversation every time I can because, like good. I said, I don't think there's anything more important than that conversation. It is the one thing that will, uh, that is, that is everybody's connected to, right? And we all, the more we can wake up and be really honest, and I don't mean woke, like the type of woke we're talking about, like a, the woke culture, the cancel culture thing, because that, that's really asleep. They just don't realize it yet. How that's not what I was saying. I meant like uh, being enlightened, being, you know, edgy yeah. for yourself and not just being hand fed, right? But, that's but I'm I saying, mean. hey, I love them. They're doing the best they can. We're trying to, yeah. you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wake some people up to wake up from being, Suppose I want the woke to woke up from being. Yeah, woke. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's part of it. It's all fun. It's all good. We go. Good. We just go with the flow. You're great, You're great brother. You're great. Uh, of course, if you you know ever uh, you know get a chance, um, you know I do follow you around, and, I, and I'd love to uh, remain in your circle. You know, sure. there's a hey, lot anytime. of anytime. Anytime you want to talk more about the business stuff or whatever. Whoops. Uh, decline. Somebody's tried to call me there. Sorry. No uh, worries. No. Whatever. Uh, you know, I was actually thinking I'd like to bring you on. I could get you and, and a couple of your band members together to uh, to talk more about think experience. I, I think that's um, that's something people to know more about. We didn't get a chance really to talk about it in a lot of the other interviews that I've watched about you. People like to talk about what you've done and not what you're trying to do. Yeah. So I think that's time I'd really like to talk to you guys about what you all are trying to get done and what you would like to see happen. Yeah. So I would, I would love that because we are really trying to think is, is a, you know, we're an immersive entertainment company yeah, and we're really exactly. focused on inventing kind of the new business models. For, for exactly. Artists. So we've exactly. got some insights now because we've been testing and validating things and getting some insights on where things are going. I'm pretty confident. I think we've got a really good model now. Uh, the numbers look really good when you start looking at the financials on what it could be. And it's making a lot of sense. And I think it really pertains to what's going on. And so i uh, love to do that. We could definitely come on. I could bring yeah. Perkins on and Kenny and us and talk about what we're trying to achieve, you know, because we're also building a school, a music school in Watts uh, right now with Flea, you know, from the Chili Peppers. And I know. Yeah, Flea, yes. yes you know, I, knew, I, I actually things. grew up on the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I, I, I must confess that's part of my rock heritage right there. So <laughs> all right. Well, so we'll definitely we'll definitely come back. I'll have Eileen get a hold of you. She's a great middleman, seems Perfect. able to work both angles. So um Absolutely. Scotty Page, thank you so much. And of course, you. uh, you know, this was brought to you in association with Star PR, FCR two four seven. And you can check out Scott Page everywhere and anything that is titled I am Scott Page. There you go. Thank Have you. a wonderful night, Thank brother. You, Thank you. Be safe, everyone.